the campus school was a demonstration school. So that meant that um, there were, I think we had about 25 students per grade and only one set, one grade level, one class per grade. Um, and it was where this, the um, students from Glasper State Teachers College would come over and do their field experience. So many of my classmates were faculty students, faculty children, but you know, if you lived close enough on the, on the Chestnut Ridge, you know, they, and um, they would take students from there. Um, <clears throat> when I think back on it, I, the, the teachers who were hired were not just hired to teach us as students, but they were to be demonstration teachers. So I had some fabulous teachers. My dad was really easy to talk to. Um, and um, I can remember he, his office was in Bunce Hall. So if you know that uh, we, we, would, we came in at the front of the circle and would walk around you know, the, the left-hand side of the circle, and then he would go off and, and go up into Bunce Hall, and then I would continue on to campus school. Um, so I think I remember going down those steps. I remember vividly one day when, for some reason, I left um, home with tears. Who knows what, you know, what a first grader or second grader, you know, and, uh, you know, by the time I got to the corner, we were laughing, so. My, my father liked to write. It was hard work. I mean, he spent hours and hours and hours, um, but he liked to do it, so. And I inherited a little bit of that. <laughs> Altogether, I think he authored five books. Um, and the, where he wrote it was typically in the same basement where I played school. He had his little corner of the basement. Um, and, you know, yellow tablet. And, um, and my dad was a storyteller because people would say to me, now again, what you know, you know, your relationship with your dad and your relationship with your professor um, was um, that he was, they really enjoyed his classes because he told stories. He brought, you know, good, gave good examples. Um, and he would, he would be talking about, you know, things that had happened at home or something. So, you know, I was, you know, my mother and I were part of that sometimes, my brother. So, but it was nice to see him in his element. So he left being dean and went to the ed educational administration um, department and taught school law and school finance. Now, when I say he'd like to write, there really were no textbooks in that school law, New Jersey school law and New Jersey school finance. So he wrote them, particularly the school finance. I remember him doing that. Um, that was kind of combining his math background and his, you know. Um, so those were the, his two, you know, signature courses. I guess a little um, story that I can recall when you talk about the growth of Rowan is that now my mother was a, an, a, um, a math professor here too, but it was only because they had somebody had had gotten ill or they were they were they needed somebody quickly, and um, my mother had her, was a you know, had been a math major and had her, her master's in math from Temple. And uh, so she got recruited. So she was part-time faculty. Um, but I remember when my parents together s developed the schedule of classes on our dining room table. And these are those great big pieces of oak tag that were taped together and, you know, and trying to do, okay, you know, not to conflict different classes and... Uh, and again, I, I don't, I'm not good at remembering how many students they were trying to accommodate or how many faculty they were. But um, you know, they had, he had he had lived all this, so I think it was a time when teachers were needed. They had to produce them. And my mom was a very strategic thinker, so she they they were a good good pair. <laughs> I mean, it was such an honor that you know the the administration building was named for him, and Dr. Robinson had done that. Yeah, he had said that most people, you know, think buildings don't get named until after people are deceased. He wanted to, um, you know, honor my dad by, you know, by doing it while he was still living. Um, and, you know, again, it was, um, you know, a, a great honor. So um, I, I always had a feeling that my dad loved what he did. You know, it was work, but it was, um, and 
he liked what he did, and he liked the people he worked with. And I think we're all privileged if we can if we can do that. It was just shortly after he died that um, the the gift had come from, you know, from Henry Rowan. And so people had said to my mom, what do you think your dad, your husband would think about this? And uh, my mother said he would be delighted that the opportunities that would be coming their way, if, if it's not Glassboro, if it's Rowan College at the time, fine. Both my parents, well, my father, you know, was a dean and then a professor, and my mother actually taught in the math department on a part-time basis. Um, and I always, because I went to campus school, you know, that was the thing that was like, I really felt part of the campus, just having the, you know, being part of everything, being really part of the fabric of the college. And then when, when um, actually my son attended kindergarten at campus school, when it was Beaux-Arts, when it was an early childhood center, right before they closed it. And then, yeah, because uh, we had, you know, I we, I had moved to Ohio and met my husband and we got married and he came back here. Um, and um, so there was a long thread there. Glassboro at the time was small. Um, you know, I mean, my parents socialized with the faculty. There was a, you know, my mother, we had, my mother had bridge club on our living room and I got to come down and like peer through the, from the upstairs, you know, watch everybody playing bridge. And yeah, there was a camaraderie. There was a, it was, it was a college town. That's what it was. Yeah. And I also remember probably even more memory of um, the summit at Hollybush because that was such a big event that happened, you know, having the president of the United States come to Glassboro to meet, you know, the uh, Russian leader. So uh, I vividly remember that because um, it was in June, I believe, it was hot. It was, it was you know, summer school. Um, and my father got a phone call. In fact, I think I answered the phone um, on a Friday night saying that there was going to be, that, the, that Lyndon Johnson and, uh, and Cus President Premier Kosygin were coming to meet at Hollybush. And it was so hot and nothing was air conditioned. So everybody, and I remember reading this in the book and I remember my dad talking about this, is that they had to transform overnight, literally overnight, to get air conditioning into Hollybush um, and to do some, you know, some sprucing up, brushing up, um, just to, to, you know, knowing this was a huge event. And my dad was in, you know, he was in um, uh, Hollybush. But when he, when, what I remember as I had, you know, Lyndon Johnson was, I knew he was a big, tall Texan. And, um, but seeing him in person, it was like, what an impressive looking man. Just, you know, he was so tall and tan. And I mean, I could see where he had the presence of a, of a leader. Um, and I didn't, I think I think saw the, the Russian, you know, I saw Kosygin as well. President Johnson offered to come back as commencement speaker just to say thank you for hosting the summit conference. Um, and, um, you know, I wasn't, I mean, I, I was there at the commencement. I wasn't a college student, but um, they, um, I remember looking up and on top of Bunce Hall and on top of the, where all the, you know, the Secret Service. Another area that I became um, very involved in, in terms of national and, and training, um, was called the PREPARE program, which is about school crisis. I mean, when you think of the kinds of things that we're dealing with now, um, and the kinds of, you know, that kids don't, just don't have fire drills, they have, you know, they have um, crisis drills. Um, so I've, I've done a lot of training throughout the country in uh, the prepare uh, curriculum. Um, and I think it's, it's, it's it, school psychology straddles the area of mental health and learning. To become a school psychologist in New Jersey, um, there are, you have to have 72 graduate credits. So it's, for us, it's a full-time three years. 
because between your coursework and your field experience. And so, um, and we're fortunate we get, you know, bright, dedicated applicants who this is what they, they really want to do. Wonder, most of them have, you know, an undergraduate degree in teaching or in psychology or related field. And I just watch their skills blossom. But their primary responsibility is to do what's in the best interest of the child. Is that going to be more work for you? Is that going to be more work for the teacher? Is that going to be more work for the school? Maybe. But keep that as your, you know, your guiding light is that what's in the best interest of the child.